welcome to Gordon's Garage. We're over here working for Never Satisfied's again. And it's a cold weekend. It's supposed to get down into the teens here in North Carolina. And uh, not looking forward to that, but we have a winter project that we're excited to uh, share with you guys. And we're going to put a 1950 Chevy Nope, actually it's a GMC, 1950 GMC onto a S10 frame. And I'll show you that right now. So this is a 1950 GMC. It's got the old six cylinder. Get this hood open, the old inline six. And we're not gonna do a will it run on this thing. I'm sure it will. The engine's not stuck, but uh, we got a little small block Chevy with a 700R4 behind it that we're going to put in it. But this thing is really solid. It's uh, got good bones to it. Floor pans are, well, the door won't open, but anyway. I want to be very detailed in this video. I had a lot of you guys asking a lot of questions on our last couple of uh, S10 swaps as far as wheelbase and um, what kind of headers we used, how did we do the drive shaft and um, the steering and the wiring and all those kind of questions. And I want to be very detailed in this video to get y'all uh, those kind of answers. This one should go pretty quick. We've got all the parts here for it. I think a little bit later today, we're going to just go ahead and get the cab and the bed off of the frame. That way after Christmas, we can come in and uh, go ahead and start setting the, setting the frame. perfect patina on it now this is the s10 frame that we're going to use um i'm not even sure what year this is s10 frame and i'll find that out but i know that it is either a long bed um frame or it was an extended cab frame either way the distance the wheel uh, base is the same and i'll i'll get some measurements on that and show you with the measuring tape the difference in the long bed s10 frame and the short bed full-size truck from the 50s is just about the same wheel base i mean maybe an inch difference which you don't have to do any framework with that we usually just separate the bed from the cab just about an inch to make up that difference but yeah so this i have your more modern everything you got your a-frame suspension coal coal spring suspension power brakes i mean power steering gearbox let's see it's even got the exhaust in it from the muffler all the way back got a good fuel tank in it of course i think he's going to do a fuel cell but it doesn't look like the uh frame is bent up or anything probably never was in an accident I don't see any kinks or bends in it so there she is we're excited so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and Try to do this on my, by myself. It's really kind of hard to do, but we'll get you a general idea of the wheelbase from the center of that hubcap back there to the center of this one is about 116, 116 inches.
and like I say that is with me just eyeballing it so I think it's really supposed to be around 117 but just physically measuring it it's 116 now we'll measure this s10 frame for wheelbase and i'll try to be as accurate as i can like i say it's it's kind of hard to do on your own So yeah, this one's reading 117. I'll show you, see. Got my measuring tape pretty well eyeballed with the center of this wheel. And then with the center of that wheel coming down, we're at 117 inches. You know, give or take, that's just eyeballing. So you're within an inch of the 1950 and that can be made up very easily the difference in that you could put offset uh offset axle perches on the leaf spring to make up an inch or you could set the bed an inch back from the cab there's all kind of ways to make up that difference so that's what you want. You either want the, the long bed S10 or the extended cab S10 will have close enough to the same wheelbase as the um, 50 short bed. And the S10 long beds are getting hard to come by. The single cab long bed, that's getting very hard to come by. You just about have to use the extended cab short bed S10 anymore just because they made so many of those. Those are very readily available. The S10 single cab long bed is uh, pretty getting rare. It was rare anyway. They didn't make many of those. Okay, so it's cold out here. I mean, it's in the 20s. It's supposed to get down in the teens. So, basically what we want to do is we want to measure from the center of the axle to the back of this cab so that when we set it on the S10 frame, we can get that perfectly lined up. And then we want, well, I'm probably gonna have to bring you over here with me. At that point, we're gonna measure from the bed top up to the back of the window so we can get that height right. So that distance, and this distance between the center of the axle to the back of the cab is very important. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to set a level and then measure over. I'm going to put some tape on there and mark on that tape just so we'll know. Okay, so what I've done is I've eyeballed the center of the axle leveled that to the fender, made a mark, and I've measured over that center of axle to the front of the cab, or to the front of the driver's door, rear of the front nose, we've got 30 inches. So that's what I've written on that piece of tape there center of axle to the front of the door, 30 inches. 
So what we shall do now is we will measure from the back of the bed up to the uh, to that window. And we'll put a piece of tape on here so we can make some marks. Hopefully that tape will stay on there. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. All right, so from the top of this bed rail to the bottom of that window channel is 16 inches. 16 inches. Sixteen inches. That's very important in making this truck look right when it's done. this is tear down mode seat frame cut out those floor pans are pretty dang solid aren't they i think where i'm going to start 
figure out how, what, how we're gonna deal with that steering column. What did we do last time? Did we cut it here? Yep. I don't remember. Cut it right there. I don't know if we even need to pull the whole steering. Yeah, well, yeah, we did because also we got to pull the. We'll get the wheel down about right in here. Yeah, we got to pull the shaft out. Okay, well, was the S10 chassis still out back? No, that's right here. Oh, oh it's, it's back. Almost in there, that rear, that wheel right there. We'll have to cut the S10 chassis. Call it 40 and three quarters. 40 and three quarters. Alright, steering column removed. What we did was just sawzalled it right here. We'll end up using that same column, but we'll push it a little closer to the dash to give them a little more room. All right, so now the nose is off. We'll pull the hood off and set it aside and work on getting the cab off. Does anybody need a good six cylinder? Let me know. Rolling this old 50 out of the shop and we're gonna put the, let me see, we're gonna pull this cab off somehow. He's thinking about sliding it up onto the roll bag. Maybe that'll work. And then just sliding it back down onto the S10 chassis here. Scott got the S10 tore down before he gave me time to get over here and get any good filming done. So got our cross members, fuel tank. Probably need to do some measuring Before we set that cab and see if that is going to be in the way right there that bracket I bet it is going to be in the way I know this is primitive. But we make it happen.
Okay, so the cab is sitting on the frame, which is already looking like something, but we got a long way to go. Get that cab scooted up a little further and uh, get it leveled out and mounted. Here's the engine that's going in it, engine and transmission. So it's like cleaning up the mess and taking down the holiday lights, right? If you're listening to 96 on the cab, the Iver radio app, let me know when you Okay, so for the body mounts, or the front body mounts, we've cut this piece of angle in half. I've already got the other one mounted, but essentially I'm using the same factory bolt and rubber in the factory mount. The uh, cab mounts were in such good shape still that we're just gonna go ahead and reuse those. Proper bolt down in there. And then this angle will slide up under there and bolt to that original mount. And I think I got my hole, may have got my hole off centered. Yeah, I, think I messed up. I have to waller that out a little bit, but essentially, we'll sit up under that original purge, and then we'll just weld it to the S10 frame. So as you see, that piece of angle is bolted to the original perch, and by the time we get the body shimmed to the place it needs to be, we'll weld that. All right, so we've been going at it all morning. We've got the, I vacuumed the cab out, got the center floor out, um, made all the body mounts. So this is what I ended up with in the rear corner of each side of the cab. Just a, a slice of angle welded to the frame, bolted to the body. Um, did the same thing on the front. Just a angle, heavy, pretty heavy angle. Just welded to the frame, bolted to the body. That's four points where the original, um, where the cab was mounted originally. I offset it just a, a hair. That shackle system was just going to be a little too complicated. Um, Scott's back here and has got his fuel cell mounted. He came up with a system to, to hang that and he's uh, currently running some fuel line, braided fuel line, so uh, that'll work out. So yeah, the cab is mounted and I guess at this point, I can start setting the engine in, is what I'll do. Now this, this body sits low in this frame, so what we usually have to do is cut a hole here for the transmission tunnel. So I'll probably go ahead and do that to get that engine back as far as we can get it then most likely 
well, this body don't have some of the same ribs that the other ones did. But that drive shaft would usually be I mean, the transmission will usually come through right here and the drive shaft would be real close to the, the floor underneath. So I like to be able to get that motor set as, as low in the chassis as I can. So that's what I'll probably start working on next. All right, we're gonna call that a day on the 50 GMC. And uh, I've probably called it a Chevrolet so many times now. So I think, I, yeah, I know I did. I showed you the mounts earlier. Um, so all those are welded in to the frame and bolted in the cab mounts. Let's see, I've cut, well, we took the floorboard out. That part's removable anyhow, and then I cut a tunnel to clear uh, the 700 R4. And we've got the engine hanging in there. We've got the engine mounts on it. Uh, but I still have to make, I'll, I'll fabricate some, uh, some frame brackets to mount to those mounts. But this is the S10 header. That's the, the header that you use for an S10 V8 swap since we're using an S10 frame. So it'll sit there like that. The main place that that header has an issue with is right above that control arm. If you got the motor sitting too low, it will hit that control arm, the header wheel. Now you can, you can get the motor up a little higher or you can dent the header a little bit. Um, the fuel pump just does have a little place. Now you could use an electric fuel pump and get the engine back a little further. That's the biggest thing that keeps you from getting the engine back, setting the engine back farther on this swap is if you're using a manual fuel pump. And uh, actually the starter comes very close to this control arm mount too so we've got the starter hanging down that's got a high torque starter and the solenoid is hangs low and to the side and is hitting that that control arm mount which i don't like i don't know if those starters can be clocked or not so i'm gonna look into that tomorrow same thing over here we've got the the engine mount bracket on the engine and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll weld some tabs that will bolt to that mount. And yes, it will be a solid mount, no rubber. Um, that's what this builder wants, so that's what we're doing. Um, now, this header, this is a S10 V8 swap header as, as well. The uh, steering column or the steering rod will come off the gearbox here and comes up through this loop toward where our factory steering will come out of the uh, cab. And then, now this is also real tight where this collector comes out against this frame. So you gotta have it positioned just right or uh, I think one of the jobs in the past Scott was saying that we cut the corner off of that frame. I don't remember doing that, but we probably did. I don't like doing that. I don't want to do that. I think we'll 
actually are going to set the motor a little offset to the passenger side to keep from doing that. But it won't be far, just a little bit, just to get it all fit in there well. And that oil pan's got plenty of clearance. I really would like to swing this engine lower in that engine cradle, but it's hard to do with these headers if you're gonna use headers. I think if you had a set of cast rear dump factory manifolds like come off a Camaro or something, that that would solve the problem here. Of course, we're building hot rods, so you gotta have headers. Now that would solve the problem, just a rear dump uh, factory cast manifold. Then we could set the engine so much farther down in the engine cradle, which that's fine. It's got plenty of clearance under the hood. Okay, the transmission, plenty of room there. Uh, we may, the way that this floor pan dips down here, we may have to cut a slot in this and, and put a tunnel in it for the drive shaft. Um, We've had to do that in the past. I don't like doing that either, but the engine is actually at too much of a tilt. So we're gonna have to raise the back of that transmission up. There's no way around it. So that'll be for tomorrow. We're gonna actually weld, fabricate the rest of the mounts tomorrow, get them, get it all bolted in there, get the headers on it, and uh, go from there. I think he wants to get the bed mounted on it tomorrow. And the bed, we'll cut the floor out of the bed. Because the bed has to sit 16 inches under the window, remember? So by the time the top of that bed gets out here, it had to have an elevated floor. That's how we do all of these, just a false floor. Or not really a false floor, but it'll be a, a, a higher floor than the factory. But, you know, this truck's not being built to haul stuff anyway. All right, so we've got our motor mounts welded in, our perches bolted, headers on. Same over here. Engine sitting in very nicely. We've got the transmission cross member welded in. What I did there was just use the factory ends of the cross member, welded a brace in between. We'll cut a drive shaft tunnel out later. Lower in the rear end, we're getting ready to get it prepped to set the bed on it. All right, we got the cab sitting on the floor while the sitting on its suspension sitting about where we want it. We got the rear lowering blocks in. That's three inch, three inch lowering blocks. He's coming in with the bed. We're gonna go ahead and start fitting it up.
Okay, we got the bed mounted, axle centered up, our cross braces in for the wood floor that it go on, some stilts welded in. I think I already videoed this, but we got our uh, lowering blocks put in. I guess we need to put the running boards on it soon, All right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're putting our wood bed in. We've got the bed all um, mounted and leveled out. Got a tailgate on, rear bumper. What we usually do is we'll just use some decking lumber and we start on the edges. We'll cut around our wheel, put that edge in and that edge and then work our way to the middle. And then we rip the one that goes in the middle. Just like that. And then I'll pull a straight edge now across here and we'll cut cut that and use uh, metal tapping screws to fasten that down. He's marking out the place where the oil filler or the, the fuel gate or yeah. good grief. What do you call it? The fuel yeah. filler gas filler goes. And I'm sure we'll come up with some kind of creative thing flap to cover that what else have we done since uh the last time the battery box mounted got a, a filler plate to go over the firewall there's one for the passenger side one here for the driver's side cover up all those holes just give it a more of a finished look we did raise the cab up in the front a half inch on each side to get the body lines right with the bed. He's got his rear wheels on there. They're fitting well. Not rubbing anywhere. Okay, so the bed is complete. Well, pretty much. The bed floor we've got in. This is just the, the most economical way we've found to do this. Um, I mean, it's pressure treated deck lumber, so it's gonna last. Uh, he's, what he usually does uh, is he'll get his uh, flame thrower and, and put a burn, burn the wood, just kind of torch it lightly to make, to darken it up. And uh, we'll build some little mini tubs over those wheels and have a little flap right here for his, for his fuel. But yeah, that starting to look really nice. Starting to look like something.